You practice, I make progress. It's the Postman. You're listening to me on the Three Count Podcast. Welcome everybody to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast presents Now Entering the Ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller. That's right. That man, the guy, the guy you call your Sherpa because I'm the one that leads you up this mountain called wrestling. And it's never about me because I'm always asking for advice. So let's talk about who's entering the ring tonight. Tonight, you have this man from CAP, from Invictus, VPW, CW, FWF, and P- PTPW. Don't talk about this man unless you know what his power up is. This is the man himself. Call him in, Phil Carnigan. Hi, how are you? It's it's me, Phil. Nice to see you. <laughs> man, I'm so hyped to have you on the show today. I'm uh, I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, yeah, uh, uh, you mentioned Invictus. Uh, it's great, uh, great show. Great seeing you there. So, uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I'm I'm really looking forward to doing this. So, thank you for having me again. Appreciate it. Yeah, man, no doubt. I was like, I was thinking about it too, like an interaction, like the quick five, like five minute convo and like legit, I saw you in your match and I was like, bro, like this is, this is a man of genius. We got to bring him on the show. We got to talk to him. And then like you passed by me and I was like, yo, great match. And you were like, you weren't even watching. And you like walked <laughs> off and I was like, <laughs> I genuinely like this. <laughs> that sounds like something I'd probably say. <laughs> Oh man, I'm exposed. <laughs> no, but I was like, I was, I was laughing because I was like, you know what? I had that coming. I had that. Coming. Oh, that's so funny. Oh man. <laughs> so I love, I love to just go up to people and be like, which part you like the best? And they're like, <laughs> I gotta go to the bathroom. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, genuinely, like I was, I was watching, and like every time, like you would, like you lose your glasses, like you're looking for them. It's like the whole Velma scene from like Scooby-Doo or like yeah. you're always like reaching for like coffee. Like that genuinely, like I was like, I get it. Like I genuinely was like popping every time, every time like you were getting so close. I was like, oh, come on. And as soon as that last <laughs> time you grabbed and you started drinking drink, I was like, that's it, Chaz. He's powering up. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, that's the goal, man. That's, you know, uh, everybody loves coffee and uh, everybody relates to, having that first sip uh, very early in the morning. So I try to relay that feeling in the ring. So, yeah. I like it. I like it, man. All right. So first question I usually ask anybody who comes on the show, pretty much just it's simple, man. But I need to know, who's Phil Cardigan? Uh, Phil Cardigan is a, it's a simple man. Uh, he loves coffee. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I don't know if he himself would consider himself a wrestler. He's kind of just there. Uh, you know, to do the stuff, do the moves, um, you know, but Phil's a simple man. He, he has a very loving wife uh, who sometimes hangs out with the mailman across the street, uh, presumably just wrestling. Don't know why she's there so often. Um, but, you know, he's uh, he's a sweet guy. You know, he means well. Um, can't see without his glasses, like we said. And he loves a good cardigan. As per the last name, Cardigan. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Seems like it seems like a down to earth guy. I, I genuinely could. He seems like the kind of guy that would mow your lawn if like your lawn was growing a little too much. And he was like, yeah, he would he would whip out the, mo- the the lawnmower and just be like, and even if you don't want it, he would be like, no, no, it's got to be cut. <laughs> so. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> so I got to ask, though, man, like, how did you get into the sport? Um, so I, I always loved it. I always loved it growing up. Uh, I always watched, I was watching from like, I think I started watching back in like 2001. So I was watching like, you know, the rock Austin, um, angle undertaker, you know, list of legendary names. Uh, and I, I, I remember watching, um, <laughs> I remember watching tough enough season one. And I remember specifically watching Maven and I, I pointed to them and I said, I looked at my mom and I said, I'm going to do that one day. And she goes, no, you're not. And I was like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, 
Uh, so yeah, it was something I, I was always really, um, fascinated with and just these larger than life characters, um, and, and all like the, the grand show that they put on for everybody and the athleticism and the storylines, like I immediately, how can you not fall in love with it? Right. Um, and then I kind of fell out of love with it for a few years. Then a couple of years later. Uh, I started like, well, all I knew was like WWE. That was like the only company I know as a kid. But then as I got older, I started watching, you know, like Impact and then like Ring of Honor. And then I, I reformed my love for it. And then I was like, you know what? I, I think I could do this. And if I, you know, if I do it and I fail, I tried. But I have to know that I tried. I can't just go my life and say I, I never tried it. So it was something I really wanted to try because I loved it. And I've been doing it ever since. Man, I like that, though. I like the fact that I think because, like, every wrestling fan kind of, like, they just kind of fall out of love with, like, the sport for a little bit. But then, like, yeah, it's always, like, just something random, like, will always bring you back to it. Like, I know, like, for me, um, I went to college. And because, like, I didn't have a TV in my room, I didn't, like, watch wrestling for, like, two years. And then, like, randomly, I walked downstairs into, like, our dorm room like our, our, uh, our common area and there's the TV and there's raw. And I was like, oh, I'm watching this all over again. And yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's what it is. Like, it's very easy to, you know, and especially I, I feel like too, if you watch it at a young age, I feel like there's some type of nostalgia. Be like, Oh man, I remember, you know, I, I, uh, what, well, one of the things that helped me with it and this could be an unpopular opinion, but like I was watching like, like TNA back in like, Oh nine, but like I was watching, like you know, I didn't know who like AJ Styles was yet. I didn't know who Samoa Joe was yet, but like just started watching, and I was like, oh wow, like, you know, Kurt Angle's here, like Sting's here, like this is this is awesome. Like like Kevin Nash, I'm like this is this is crazy. These guys I used to watch when I was when I was little, and then I was like, wow, AJ Styles, amazing. Samoa Joe, was amazing. Beer money, all, and then I started like recognizing all this new talent. And the same thing with like other companies too, not just you know TNA, but um, you know I got I had that nostalgia in me, like loving Kurt Angle and Sting, and then like you grow to love new wrestlers, and and I just feel like it's such an amazing thing to love, and it's so easy to you know get right back into. That was always my opinion about it, you know. Yeah, I feel like you can drift away from it, and then you just find yourself getting pulled back in. You'll find like those wrestlers that you used to watch. Like I know for sometimes, like it's funny. Cause like you mentioned like AJ Styles, especially like an impact. And I remember seeing him there and then like, I just didn't follow him. Like after he left, I was just like, whatever. And then he popped up at WWE. I didn't even realize he had like a whole career in new Japan. And then when I go back and watch, I was like, Oh, he's having killer matches over here. I was like, right. I missed out on a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, and like you, his name would pop up everywhere, you know, like New Japan, right? Like every company, and you're like, oh, he's gonna go to the WWE, obviously soon, you know, he's amazing. And then I, I, you start to think like, when are all these other guys gonna follow suit, you know? And they did, pretty much. Um, but it's just really cool to see, you know. And that's one of the reasons why I love wrestling is because um, you get all these different, may amazing men and women from different companies bouncing you know, back, back and forth to each company. And if you don't like one company, then you might, you know, find some company that has the guys and women that you like and go to that company. Like there's just so much now. And I feel like back then there wasn't, and now it's just like, it's everywhere. And I love it. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I tell. So. I, it's something I talk about with my friends too. I'm like, you know, like wrestling has something for everybody, like, and legitimately has something for everybody. And I tell people like, there's even a market now, the niche is like so small, but there's wrestling where you pretend that you're a 1920s character. And like, I think that's like the greatest thing of all time. I'm like, I have to find this promotion and go work there at least once. I was like, because Dan Housen is there. I was like, I need to go find it too. And I was like, <laughs> I genuinely, I get, I pop for every time I think about it, but right. speaking of different promotions, man, I'm very curious, man. Like what's been one of the worst bumps you've taken? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, well, um <clears throat> probably the one that kind of led into Phil Cardigan um which was uh it was the creative pro it was the king of cap battle royal 
uh, I think it was 2018, I believe. Um, maybe 19. I don't know anymore. I've been hit so many times in the head. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I was not Phil at the time. I was grammar cop. And I was at a point uh, where I really didn't know where I, what I wanted to do with this character. And I kind of just felt like, things were getting stale for me. So I want to try new things. And uh, w- one of the things I want to do, and looking back on it, it's very, very, very bad idea, but was I went to eliminate someone outside of the apron. And while another person was on all fours, I would step over, like step on top of them, kind of like how like Michael Jordan did like the, the end of the slant, like the slam dunk at the end of Space Jam, like that. Yeah. Only I didn't, you know, you know, I didn't, I wasn't in space jam, but, um, I went up, I went, you know, I jumped on him and then I went over and I, I got the elimination, but I overshot it and I landed, I, I went out of the ring and I landed head first onto the floor and it cut me open. And I still have the scars here <laughs> and blood everywhere. Uh, I was like loopy, um, major league concussed and um i was sent to the hospital and um yeah it it took me a while to actually see the doctor because i think somebody got shot in the hospital while i was there and uh yeah it took a little while to get seen but i hope they're doing okay but i you know i had a headache (laughs) yeah like there's Two things like you know, right. head injury, bullet hole. Right, right. Yeah, I understand. I understand. I, 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 I'm not, you know what? I don't think I've ever shared like this story like on the podcast in general. But I remember like I, I was in Iraq, and um, I had rolled my ankle right, and like pretty bad, like it was like a third degree sprain. I remember getting carried into like the hospital and sitting in the emergency room, and like this woman, who was Iraq, dropped her baby, <laughs> like oh. oh. And her baby, like, has, like, a rock in her head. And I'm, like, I got her ankle. She's got a baby. I was, like, that probably should take priority over me right now. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, like, holy shit. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah, I was, like, damn. I was, like, where did I go? And I realized I was, like, this ain't, this ain't America anymore, bro. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, that's wild. Yeah, yeah, we could we could talk more off screen about like other stuff that's happened out there. Um, aside from the worst bump, right? Like, I'm just very curious because we've all probably taken them, but I'm very curious. What's the hardest you've been hit in a ring? <laughs> uh, uh, I had to think about that one. I've been hit pretty pretty hard. Um, the hardest hit, I I have to say, I did a segment with. Yeah, I think I think that's probably the hardest. The hardest I've been hit. I did a segment with Sandman at Victory Pro Wrestling. I, first of all, let me just say this: love Sandman. Oh yeah, I absolutely love the guy. Um, but he, um, <laughs> I remember we, we were doing a promo. We were doing a promo in the ring. And, you know, the plan was for him to hit me with the kendo stick. Um, and I'm saying I love him, you know, for hitting me that hard. I don't actually know him that well. Just preface that. But all I heard was him say, look left. And I was like, huh? Boom. Right on my head. And I went down. But, like, it heard like, like a gunshot went off. Right? Because the thing hit me so hard. And then... I look, like don't know how I wasn't concussed because I'm like a concussion magnet, no clue. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I remember going to the back and then like having you know you ever see like Looney Tunes when they have that huge like a hit and then the huge like <laughs> that's what it felt like on my head and I think it kind of looked like that. But yeah, he was like he had his like dog or something and he's like, you good. And I was like, Oh, there's a dog. I'm like, am I concussed? Like, uh, when did you get a dog in here? <laughs> but yeah, but uh, that was probably the hardest I've been hit. Yeah. 
<laughs> Dude, that's that's wild. Yeah. I uh I met Sandman for the first time uh it was a couple months back. And <laughs> yeah, you're right, like He's genuinely like the nicest dude ever. <laughs> but one of my friends, uh, Ron Holiday, was like, uh, we we're all talking in the back, and it was me and my trainer, uh, Sicken, and then and, uh, and, and Ron, and uh, they were they were talking like they were like friends forever. And I'm the new guy, right? And so Ron just looks at me. He was like, "Hey, uh, tell him your name." And I was like, "Oh, it's uh, it's Red Dog." And then. Uh, Everybody like stops and they just stare at me, right? And like Red Dog, I was like, yeah. And then Ron goes, "Tell him why." And I was like, "Cause my first name's Clifford." And all I hear is, "Oh God damn it! Are you serious?" <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, then like Sandman proceeds to tell me this story about, cause he's like, "How long have you been in the business, kid?" And I was like, "Uh, like 18, 19 months." He's like. Oh, let me tell you about what happened with me. <laughs> and like divulge into this full story. But yeah, I thought it was the funniest thing that he was like, I never, and I, and it's weird because like, I guess like the wrestling business and it's super small, Yeah. but it's like never in my lifetime did I ever think I would meet Sandman, let alone have this man tell me like, I have grandkids and they, I know all about Clifford. Like, we're going to talk <laughs> about this kid. <laughs> like, right, 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 right. Oh my gosh. Wrestling's weird sometimes. <laughs> weird. Yeah, man. I was just know, funny. super excited. But yeah, I definitely I, I don't know. I guess because like I had that initial shock and I was just like, why is why are people trying to get me to talk to Sandman? I was like, right, right, right. This is a legend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just some scrub. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell my name's Clifford. Yeah, what? <laughs> that was crazy. It's like, yeah. <laughs> People made fun of me in elementary school. That's why my name is what it is. I was oh. like, this, this is so dumb. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but speaking, speaking of lessons and things they do like learn, what's the hardest lesson that you've had to learn in the sport? Um, that's a good question. You know, it's funny. Nobody's really ever asked me that before. Um, You know what? Honestly, like I, I, there was a bunch of answers I kind of just like jumbled around in my head, but I think the hardest lesson, you know, cause like as a wrestler, like you hear lessons, like, you know, go slow, take your time, listen to the people. Like, yeah, like you, you, you're going to learn those as you're going to wrestling school and through experience. But I think one of the toughest lessons to learn and probably one of the hardest pills to swallow is just learn patience. Because like, if you feel like you're at a point where nothing's really going for you at the moment, then, you know, something's either around the corner or it could just happen at any, when you least expect it. So like, I, like some people are like, you know, I, I haven't really done, I've been in the business, you know, this amount of years, I feel like I haven't really accomplished much. Be patient, you know, like it's, it sucks. And like a lot of people quit, you know, um, cause it's, it's a tough, you know, business. It's very frustrating. You know, things happen out of our control, but man, patience, you know, that's, that would be the hardest lesson I had to learn because I, I was one character for a while that I, I, I feel I felt like I wasn't really getting anywhere and I didn't know if I wanted to even do it anymore. And then all it took was like, all it took was an injury, but, uh, you know, kind of, I got, you know, I, I, I got a little bit more, um, I don't want to say like recognition, but I, I, I started seeing a lot more progress in myself and I, and I didn't even see it coming because I fell on my head. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great, that's a great lesson is, is, is patience. Like you're right. Like, yeah, it, it's funny. Cause you hear it all the time, like patience is a virtue and like, you are like, you know, you gotta just be, you know, keep, keep calm and stuff like that. And I always think to myself too. And I'm like, I no, no, I, I, I want to go, like, I, I want to hit that next level. And you're right, man. Like it's, it, it, the wrestling business tells you, man, you got to work slow. And if you think you're working slow, you got to work slower. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. You hear how many times you hear that, but like, Oh my God, as much as you're tired of hearing it, like how true is it though? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
it's crazy it's like i i don't know like like so yeah sometimes i think about this is just me like this is how i operate like sometimes i do feel like you know i'm not really like sometimes you see your friends like like getting to that level and you're still like in one place but like obviously you're happy for your friends but like that says oh okay that's this is achievable i need to work harder so that's like my mindset like all right, am I really to where I want to be yet? It's, it's kind of taken a little bit longer. How can I work harder to get myself prepared for that next level? So that's like something I always kind of have in the back of my mind as like I'm doing stuff. Yeah. No, you're right. It's funny too. Cause like I've, I, I brought that up with my trainer a couple of times where I'm like, bro, like I think like, and like, mind you, like I've only, I, I've been doing this for less than two years now and I'm, I'm still like working really hard at it too. And I, I tell them all the time. I was like, cause I understand, like, listen, I I'm 36. I'm no spring chicken. Like I get it. Right. But I was like, I, I always end up feeling like I'm his like kept secret. Right. Because I'm like, we, like, we had a practice, like, I'll be honest. We had a practice match on Saturday, uh, Sunday. Right. While I was at training. And there was a couple guys there that had never seen me before and they hadn't seen me at some other, some of the shows. And so they were like, Oh, you got to get that kid out there and have him go uh, work different shows and stuff like that. And he's like, and my, my trainer was like, he does. It's just, he's just always around and like, he knows how to work. And so I was like, well, cool. At least I'm getting kind of recognition around. I was like, I just hope sometime I'm going to get this break and someone's going to be like, get this kid on the show because I, you're right. Like you try, you try your best to keep your blinders on, but you cannot help but turn your head to look and see what other people are doing. I have a few of my friends who are all, they're all on uh, AEW Dark. And I was like, I want to be there too. <laughs> right. Right. But like that, that's like another thing too. Like, like you said, like he, he went to bat for you. Right. That's, that's important because if somebody says, Hey, do you got a, you have a good guy I could bring to this show or, or, or good, you know, good, anybody I, I can bring to the show. Like, yeah, I got, you know, I got red dog. Like, and then there you go. There's, there's a guy in the show. And as far as like, like a lot of the cap guys get booked on AEW, but like, I, I, I like, I could sit here and be like, damn, like, like my best friend, like Aaron Rourke was on it twice. Right. Uh, over the moon that he was on AEW Dark. And I could sit here and be like, damn, like, you know, like, that could be me also. Like, why can't I, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, what a lot of people don't realize is when things like that happen and, like, a lot more creative pro talent, like, have recently been on Dark, all that does is, A, give them opportunity, which is great because I want the world for them, but, B, it gives awareness to your school. Right. And more eyes like, oh, this kid came from I'm just using Creative Pro as an example. I'm like, this is just my experience. I don't I'm not trying to single out Creative Pro, but like I've noticed that like people from there be like, OK, well, this kid was on from Cap. This kid was from Cap. And then we have more eyes coming to the school. But that could be. It could literally like it could work any way. Like if, if you're like if you teamed with a guy and he got on 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 dark you know, same thing. Oh, he was on dark. I want to learn more about him. Then he sees you. It's, it's, it only helps your friends and it helps you. And it, it's, it's better than a lot. Of most, like most wrestlers think in my opinion, um, it just, it, 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 to me, it's like a, a win-win. If yeah. one of your, if somebody, you know, gets a huge opportunity, it's, it's, it's really a win-win. And I, I hope a lot more wrestlers kind of see it that way, you know? Oh, I genuinely, like, I, it's weird. Like, I, I'm right with you. I become, like, everybody's biggest cheerleader. <laughs> and, you know, you know the results are going to happen on Dark. Like, you know that they're, you know, right. enhanced on the town. But right. I legit, I'm sitting there, like, just, let's go. <laughs> like, right, and that's, time. I love it. And it's, it's beautiful because you're genuinely happy for them. And, like, it, like, it, there's no, like, and that's so cool because, like, those are your, those, those are your friends. Like you're sitting there cheering and like, that's the attitude to have, you know what I mean? Like I want nothing but the best for anybody, you know, who gets an opportunity like that. And if I got to work harder to get there, I'm gonna do that. You know what I mean? So 
it's beautiful. Like art, like when you see other people getting like success, it's just, it makes me, it makes me very happy. Yeah. I love, I, I, and it's, it's, I always tell my friends too. I'm like, I I'm genuinely excited to see where you're at. I was like, just know that I'm going to catch you so <laughs> I can get there too. <laughs> right. I was like, and, and I always, I always pretend like it's a comp like, to, and I, I guess like, maybe I look at it through because like I have older eyes, like, but I look through it. And I'm like, I genuinely know I can get to that spot if I do X, Y, and Z and continue to grind on X, Y, Z. Right. So like, I don't, I don't tell people like, oh, you know, I, I don't know why he made the show. I'm like, no, 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 no. He made the show. And so am I. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. yeah. You got a good attitude, man. I got to say, you know, it's a great attitude to have. Yeah, we we'll talk more about some lessons that happened offline. <laughs> uh, so I'm curious, man. Like everybody that has after their matches, right? Because most wrestlers don't eat because we're always superstitious about like throwing up in the ring or something happening behind the scenes, something. But I'm very curious because everybody has one, and I I've just noticed this more and more recently. What's your post match snack or meal? Oh God. Um. So I'll tell you my pre and my post, if that's cool. So if I'm on the road, like a drive more than like two hours, I'm going to have Chipotle. <laughs> it's just going to happen. And that's a gamble. It's a risk. I will say that. <laughs> One body slam and I might have to go home early. <laughs> but I do that to myself and I'm fine with it because it's Chipotle. Um, but af- after, and then I'll have like an energy drink or something, which is not, I'm, 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 there's basically a wrestling match going on in my stomach as I'm in the ring all the time. <laughs> but, uh, a- after, um, it's weird because <laughs> I'm, just, I'm so weird. I want something heavy before the match. And then I want something light after the match and i feel like it's usually the other way around because you don't want to be like bloated or anything right no 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 no. i i so after the match i'll have either like a protein bar or like like the little like chip um like the uh quest like protein chips yeah 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 i like those and then i'll try to find like after the show then whoever i'm riding with will try to go like to applebee's or whatever but yeah, I, I keep, I switch it up. I like people are like, Oh, I can't, I can't eat before a match. I'm like, give me Chipotle. Give me a nice coffee. Body slam me. See what happens. Yeah. That's all. Whatever happens, happens. <laughs> That's awesome. Don't be mad at me. So <laughs> I, I, yeah, I <laughs> did it myself. I, uh, <laughs> I'm one of those guys. I like, I like, I'll have like gummy bears, like a few, like probably about like an hour and a half for the show. I like pop a couple gummy bears and stuff like that. And then like, after the match, I'm like, if we're not at Taco Bell or at like Sheets or Wawa's, like I'm gonna throw a temper tantrum. Yeah, we're fighting. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. So somebody somebody told me that James Storm told them I was I was there, I just wasn't in the room to hear it. That if you combine gummy bears and monster, I believe, it's like the best pre-workout ever. Or like best oh. energy before a match ever. That's what I heard. I'm, I'm, I haven't tried it yet. I don't know why, but somebody told me that he said that. So we'll see. That might be. Oh, he could have not just said it. Maybe they were just making it up, but I don't know. So no, I have yet to try. That might be the move. That might be the move. That might. I know. That might be the move. Yeah. I know. I know some of the other guys I used to work with uh, that I work with. Um, they do Rice Krispie bars because they get such a kick. Like instant, really instant rush. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's crazy. Cause like, I was like, that doesn't work. I was like, that's dumb. And then like recently, which was really weird. Like I'm on TikTok like all the time. And I just saw this random nutritionist that was like eating rice krispies before a workout. It's a great idea. And I was like, then I'm just going <laughs> to buy Christ crispy bars. <laughs> just right. Like, yeah. <laughs> like why am I wasting so much money on like yeah. brain energy? Yeah. That's like, Jim's Jim's protein on uh, Jim's pre-workout? No, bro. Yeah. Like I'm just gonna make me a pan of rice crispy trees and eat them. <laughs> it's like that's the move now. That's what I have to do. That's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> Watch next before a match, like if I see you at Invictus, I'm gonna have a rice crispy treat. I'm gonna run through the wall probably. 
<laughs> just gonna run around the venue well it's because like my character is like super high energy anyway so like i just could i would imagine like I would be like that squirrel and uh, was it a nut job? Was that the movie? Over the hedge. Where, Over like, the hedge. Where the world stopped and he's just. Yeah. Like... <laughs> he's just going. Yeah. yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you drink before a match? Uh, me? It's usually just water. Yeah. Nothing. No, no energy. No. I'm, like I said, I'm always like, like how I am right now. Like if I was backstage, like I would. You know, I'd be discussing like how the match would go and stuff like that. But once like it's kind of like set, then I'm just just high energy like the whole time. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was telling one of my buddies that my my uh, New Year's resolutions was to give up drinking energy drinks. No, no, <laughs> I didn't make it. I I don't think I made it three weeks. And I, there was a good three weeks too. I felt great. I don't know what happened. I think I just went to 7-Eleven and I was like, oh, they have energy drinks. Like they don't usually. And then I just grabbed one, paid for it, obviously. And then, you know, I drank it. But that was the end of that. And that was January. Yeah, I always have like, um, I try to like to, to wean off of like caffeine, just like in general. Just sometimes just kind of like see what it's going to do. And usually like two, and you're right. Like I feel like the first, the first four days, I'm like, I am ready to murder somebody. Just yeah. in general but then like like day five six like i start feeling a lot better and then like i can use it go and then like like you said randomly i'll pop into a grocery store or something i'm like oh oh check out that new energy drink i haven't seen that one before let me try that flavor and then i'm hooked back all over again i'm like it's like a cycle it's like a vicious cycle well like I, I just got myself like i just got myself like out of it right and i was like and, I, and i'm in that window right where i was like bet like I, i'm doing pretty good and then I saw on TikTok, like someone was like, hey, have you guys tried Triton's Orange Breeze yet? It's really good. And I was like, really? And I walked into a store and I saw, I was like, oh, let me try this. And then I got addicted again. I was like, God damn it. That's not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> I, I was at a show. I was at a show with um, TJ Crawford. Mm-hmm. And we were going, we had a long trip. And... Uh, we went to 7-Eleven to get like snacks and stuff. And like, we both went like for the energy drinks. So I was grabbing, I think a rain and he was grabbing those drinks. Um, uh, Celsius, I think it's called. Oh yeah. 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 So uh, I, I, I've been seeing those a lot recently. So I said like, are those things good? And he's like, bro, incredible. And I'm like, they give you energy. He's like, yeah, they're good. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll get that instead of the rain. So I did. I found a flavor I like. Very picky about my flavors. Um, and I, I like sipped it like like a match before mine, or or maybe two or whatever. Oh no, it was it was. I started I started like nursing it like three matches before mine. I like how I just you see how I just jumped from <laughs> match to match. Yeah, that's what it was. Three <laughs> matches before mine. And then, like, I eventually I finished it, and then I'm like, this thing sucks. Like, it didn't really do anything. And I was like, all right. So then, like, I'm getting ready to go out, and then all the I don't know, I don't know what it was. I don't know if other people have had this experience with this drink. And I'm not being paid to say this unless they want to pay me Celsius. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just got like I I got this like like un like unmanageable energy. And I was like, I have to hit somebody. And I was just like, I was like, you know, I was like doing one of these. I don't know. I was like, I was off the walls and I ran out to the ring like John Cena. I didn't have a hat. Otherwise I would have, you know, did the whole thing. But man, I don't know what I was like, bro. Like I'm sitting there in the car and I'm just like, I, I gotta get, I gotta get more Celsius. It's crazy. <laughs> I, I, have, I actually haven't even drank one since if I'm being completely honest. It's such a rush. Yeah. I was just like, you know what? Maybe that was just a little bit too much. Like I got to turn this down. Yeah. I, it yes. snuck up on me i'll tell you that <laughs> well so my next question for you man is you know you've been in the business for a little while i'm just very curious like what kind of advice would you give to up-and-coming wrestlers um so um uh yeah i mean just treat everybody with respect 
first and foremost, like no matter what position they play on the show, um, just treat everybody with genuine respect. Um, like kind of like what we said before, if things get hard, you know, don't quit. Cause I know a lot of like, I've seen a lot of new trainees like come and go because that's not what they thought. But if you stick it out, like it, it obviously is worth it. Uh, we could both, you know, vouch for that. Um, um, you know, just be presentable, respectful. Um, be, just be genuinely nice. I, I feel like we're in such a strange business where there's a lot of weird slash bad people. Just let's just all be nice. Let's all just be nice to each other. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why that's so hard. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I could say like, I could say like the usual stuff, like, you know, like, you know, be on, you know, show up early to a show, always help out, always, you know, shake everybody's hand, but like, just be respectful. Be, be nice. Work hard. You'll get to where you want to get to. Don't give up. You know, that's, that's really all it is. So. I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. Well, so for my he- my last heavy hitting question, before we get into the second best segment of the three count podcast, I got to know, man, I need one do and one don't of the locker room. Oh God. <laughs> oh man. You got some good, good questions, man. I, I tell you. Appreciate I, it. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, well, I'll tell you the first don't is don't I, I'll tell you two don'ts. Okay. I don't know if that was allowed, but I already got two off the back. Number one, don't don't not wash your gear if you're a wrestler. Wash your gear. Wash your gear. Phil Cardigan. No. Um <laughs> it's just it's the worst if you're like you're going around like all smelly and stuff. Even if you get like the little like spray bottles, damn, wash it. Uh, also, well, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I was gonna say bring your own wrist tape, but I yeah. know I'm gonna forget the next time, and <laughs> I'm probably gonna ask for it. So I'm just gonna forget like I ever said that. So <laughs> never mind. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's funny. It's funny you bring that up, man. Because like, so like my character, like I have gloves and elbow pads and everything. So I don't I don't usually wear wrist tape, but I always have like four rolls of wrist tape, and it's and I know why. It's because someone's gonna be like, "Hey, man, you got wrist tape?" I'm like, "Yeah, here." <laughs> like, oh yeah. man. Or like my favorite one is I'll be like, "What color?" And they're like, oh, "You have different that, colors." <laughs> I I had the same reaction. I like it's like you're like you just turn into like like models or something you're like oh well, there's colors that's crazy what? do you have like do you have blue I'm like, i don't I even do. like blue but you know yeah <laughs> crazy i like that that's so funny yeah that you said that uh what's what's it do in the locker room i mean in the locker room i guess just if the locker i, I don't know i mean if the locker room's tight you know, don't have your stuff spread out all over the place, you know, make room for other people, you know, uh, I guess social awareness yeah. is a, is a big thing. I feel like some, some people lack, um, and just like, you know, if somebody's going over something, just let them be, you know, um, yeah, you know, stuff like that. I feel like there's way more don'ts than do's in the locker room, you know? I like that though. Yeah. Don't don't forget to wash your gear. Yes. Don't forget your wrist tape, and do be cur- courteous. I like. Those. Don't quote me on the wrist tape because I'm probably gonna ask Aaron Rourke for a wrist tape next time I see this. But it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is it for my heavy hitting questions. So we got to get into the second best segment of the Three Count Podcast. You're probably wondering what the first best segment is, and that's easy. It's Red Dogs Power Rankings that you can find on the debate shows every Sunday live so this is the three count podcast 10 count questions mr cardigan this is how it works i'm gonna fire off 10 questions at you happy fast 
Uh, whatever first answer, that's your answer. Okay. Um, I get nervous with rapid, so just bear with me here. Don't worry. <clears throat> It'll be fine. But All we're right. going to put on imaginary timer for just added pressure. Bing! And here we <clears throat> go. Smackdown or Raw? Raw. Favorite color? Uh, 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 green. Green Power Ranger. Mario or Sonic? Sonic. Favorite movie? The other guys. Ethiopian or Columbia Coffee? Wow. Colombian. <laughs> Damn. That was a good one. Favorite dance move? Mine. <laughs> PlayStation or Xbox? Oh, you can't do that. Uh, damn, I was with Xbox for like 20 years. Now I'm PlayStation. All right, fine. I, I'll go PlayStation now. Now, yeah, now I'll go PlayStation. Keep it going. Keep it going. I'm, All I'm, right. I'm, Favorite I'm podcast? Celsius. Yours right now. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nominate one person that you want to see on the show. Oh, God. Uh, can i do two can i do two people sure steve and stevens yeah (laughs) and then last but not least my favorite question to ask every single person who comes on this show favorite curse word phil is a curse i mean i'm not danhausen uh if i had to say a curse word you're gonna edit this out right no (laughs) all right I'll take your word for it. Honestly. Damn. A, a good, a good, a good D word is definitely yeah, in the cards. <laughs> keep, keep it down. Keep it down. I don't yeah. want anybody to hear that. Man. Yeah. Nah. yeah. <laughs> but that is it for the three count podcast, 10 count questions. And all I need from you now, Phil, is let our listeners and our viewers know where they can find you. Uh, you can find Phil Cardigan at Twitter at Phil Cardigan, uh, Instagram at Phil Cardigan. Uh, YouTube is Philip Cardigan. You can check out my merchandise at prowrestlingtees.com slash Phil Cardigan. Uh, Twitch, also Phil Cardigan. Uh, you can catch me every Monday night. Well, not every Monday night. Yeah, most of the part, most of the time, Monday nights on Cat TV on YouTube. And if you're in the area, come see a live show of mine. I'll give you a, uh, I'll give you a, you know, I'll give you an eight by 10 if you pay for it. So yeah, that's where you can find me. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) There you have it. That's all it is. That's all we have, right? So this is it. This is how we wrap up the three count podcast presents now entering the ring. And as I said, I'm your host, Clever Red Dog Miller, and I'm the man who leads you up this mountain. Yes, I am your Sherpa, but it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. And today, you see him here, the coffee drinking, glasses wearing, dance move having, mother of of all F-bombs, the man himself. Give it up for Phil Cardigan, and you guys know what to do. Be there, or you just wait till this episode ends. And then you wait till the outro and another episode is going to play. Peace. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there. Find us at the Three Count underscore pod. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count pod. Give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give us a subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys and we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. At ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So show us some support, please.